I'm trying something different on this video. I'm trying to do some voiceover work. So bear with me. Here I'm setting my uh, PID to 400 degrees. Usually I'll let the light soak for about 10 minutes. I like to put 20 just in case so I let it go over, but usually it's better to set the time over because you can always skip steps if you need to. Here I am starting. I usually like to set all the steps at once, but when you're set with a PID, a ramp up PID, Instead of going step one, 400, step two, 1550, step three, 1300, and so on and so on, you have to set middle steps or your PID just starts to ramp up. It'll go to 400 and then start ramping right up to 1500. So you go step one, 400, you're allowed a time. Step two, 400, and then say like five minutes. Then you go step three, 1550, and then your time you know, and so on and so on. And you'll set a step between that and the 1300. That way it's not ramping uh, instead of, you know, going on the time. I had to learn that one the hard way. And then after you set all your steps, you put negative one and it'll go back to the first step. Now keep in mind, I like to, you know, put my time extra because you can always hit step and then go to whichever step you need to go. I know I've said this already, but it's very important because if you set it under, all of a sudden you'll go to the next step and you'll either lose your temp or you'll get more temp. It just turns out to be a big hassle. Now 1500 is my quench. That's the last one. After that, I put negative one. It'll go back to the first step. And it's done. Alrighty, so here we go. <laughs> Been watching too much Hydraulic Press Channel. That channel's great. So it's been 10 minutes, 400 degrees. Take the knife out, and make sure both sides are covered. This is powdered in a scale. I'm going to show you how to use the paint on, but I must say, with 5200, I've failed three out of four times. I don't know what it is. I've done plenty of knives. 5200 with the powder, never failed once. And I did uh, the paint on with 80 CRB, and it worked great. But for some reason, three out of the four knives, it tells me it has to be the paint on scale with 52100 don't work together. So I will say though, this is normalization process. I don't do it like this anymore because I found a better way. If you keep watching the video, I'll show you that too. I'm kind of trying to show all my process of heat treating and how I've come to it and the best ways and what I do and what I've done wrong. So uh, just stay tuned. So here's the paint on any scale. Man, I wanted it to work. It goes on so easy. But for some reason with 52100, it just doesn't work. Any CRV works great. You just paint it on real thin with a paintbrush. 
You know, if you want to, you can use a heat gun to dry it out. If not, you let it sit overnight to dry out. I really don't know what happened. I mean, <laughs> I've tried everything with this stuff. It just doesn't work with 52100. I mean, actually, it works once. I don't know what I did different, but it worked at once. For me, that's not good enough to keep using. Now, if I do 1095 or 1084 or something, I'll try it and use it again to see if it works. In this video, I painted it and put it right into the oven. I've tried that, I've tried letting it dry first, I've tried using a heat gun to dry it, I've tried letting it dry overnight. So anyway, it ramps up to 1550, it usually takes about an hour and a half with this oven. I let it sit for 10 minutes, take it out, and then I let it cool to black. You can see in the video that I've got two quench plates. I used to try that too. So I think it's better to let it just air cool to black and then when it gets to 1300, put it in for 10 more minutes. the step down to 1300. The thing is, it takes a while to go from 1500 down to 1300, especially with the door closed. I like to open the door and let it cool off that way. Sometimes I'll even use a fan. The thing is, it'll say 1300, but you close the door, and it'll ramp back up to 1450 because inside the oven it's a lot hotter. So you just have to be patient which is good because it still lets the knives cool off even more. put the knives into it gets up to like 1450 or so and then it'll go from 1450 to 1500 now let it sit at 1500 for 10 minutes and quench
after the normalization process, the paint on Anna's scale flaked off, so I'm painting it again to make sure. Um, this could have been a factor, but I'm telling you, I tried it many different ways. Well, four different ways with the 5200, and three of them failed. I keep repeating myself on this, but I have no idea. I've never really failed a heat treating except those three times. So, it, it really kind of bugs me. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. how I do my normalizing now. This is 321 stainless steel tool wrap. The 309 is the one that they use for uh, like CPM 154 D2 and all the uh, stainless steel uh, heat treated. This is used for carbon steel. A lot of people I read use it for uh, heat treated but I don't understand because they say you have to cut it open and let the knife drop into the oil. That just doesn't seem right to me. Just make sure whenever you're working with tool wrap, you always wear gloves. This stuff is razor sharp. It will cut you quick.
So here's a cool little tip. This guy Joe Pie on YouTube. Well, that's what he calls himself. It's P I E C Z Y N S K I. If you're into machining, do yourself a favor, watch his videos. He's got some amazing advice and some amazing techniques. Do yourself a favor. Anyway, watch his videos. So he told me, use argon to displace oxygen in the tool wrap. It works really good. You get argon at any welding supply shop. I've been trying to learn TIG welding, so I had a bottle anyways. All right, so with uh, normalizing and with tool wrap, it's the exact same thing, no difference. You put it in 50-50 for 10 minutes, you know, take it out, let it cool to black, 1300, same exact procedure, no difference.
All right, so now we paint the knives, hang them up, let them dry. As the oven's heating up, when it gets to 1450, I put the knives in. 1500, 10 minutes, then in the oil for quench. I usually make sure to heat the oil for about 120 to 150. Just have to be careful when doing multiple knives because the oil will go over town. So I've done 52, 100, 1095, 1084, 01, and 80 CRV. Each has its own recipe and a little bit different, but they're all basically the same. I've used a propane forge. I've even used the propane torch and just held it over it in the canola oil. Now I'm using McMaster car, the 11 second quench. I swear, the only difference is the paint on any scale. And three out of four knives I failed. And I know I keep going back to that point, but you gotta understand, it's so frustrating. Especially when it works for one knife and the 80 CRV. So here I am testing it with the file and you can almost tell it's just biting right into the knife that I used to paint on and the scale. The other knife, it skated, no problem. So here's one of the most important tips when you're using anti scale. You don't grind it off, you wash it off with hot water and soap. It'll come right off. I usually use a brush just to make sure, but most of it comes off with just the water. I can't emphasize enough, do not grind it. It'll make it twice as hard to come off. You'll just be fighting yourself. I used to uh, put my oven at 650 for 10 minutes, but it would bake on the anti scale in clumps. So make sure you just do it at 400. Look at this knife. This is the one with the powder. Nice and clean. You just start grinding where you left off. Some people like to heat treat without doing anything to the knife. Some people take the knife down to a dime size edge. What I do is kind of in between. That way I have some of the bevel, but I don't have to worry about warping. So here's proof. It's even an HRC 40 and it's biting in everywhere. It's so frustrating.
I didn't videotape it or add it here, but I heat treated this knife three times. I annealed it and it came out so warped. Look at that. I finally put it on the surface grinder and took it off after straightening it and tempering it and straightening it. It actually looks pretty good now. All right, so here's the two knives that were in the foil. They've been painted and ready for quench. Always make sure to wipe your tongs off if you're doing multiple knives. I actually made these tongs with a half inch steel I got from Home Depot and then I welded the other parts together. They work really good. I was surprised. One of my many welding projects that uh, looks horrible but works great. Believe me, it only takes one time not wiping off the tongs and then catches fire in the oven and what a mess. So, once again with the file and both knives fail. So frustrating. So frustrating. So I washed off the anti scale, heat treated again, and they came out perfect. I didn't get it on video, but same process. Only one problem, a lot more grinding. These had scale on them, and believe me, scale is a lot harder to get off, so it's twice the work. You gotta grind off the scale, then you can start working on the knife. Another big tip, anytime you're flat grinding, use a welder's magnet. Welder's magnets work great for flat grinding. Just it takes some practice because if you put pressure on one side too much, it'll make the knife all wonky. The handles won't fit and it's just a big mess. Believe me, my first 10, 20 knives had all these little dips right at the end. So annoying, <laughs> believe me. We all gotta go through it, and it's all just practice, but if I can do it, anyone can do it. I can't tell you how many times I almost quit, threw knives across the room, it was so frustrating. I declared war on bevels and everything, but it just takes practice. There's no secret, no 
special way to grind, a special thing. You just gotta learn how to best do it for yourself. That's it. That's the secret. Well, thanks for watching. I hope I didn't bore you too much. Please like, subscribe, and I hope I did all right for my first voiceover. Take it easy.